Coronavirus, COVID-19. It's changing everyday life very quickly and dramatically. I'm Patrice Sikora, and in this special episode of his new podcast series, The Ride, Life, Work, and Wealth, Chris Giroux of Three Hats Financial talks with guest Raina Shohan, Chief Investment Strategist with the Investment Planning Council. The focus is the pandemic's potential impact on investments and the shock and confusion slamming many investors. Now, Chris, why don't you introduce Rana and his rather unique qualifications? Sure thing. Thanks, Patrice. Well, Raina, thank you very much. I know you're a very in-demand <laughs> gentleman right now, so I really appreciate you taking the time to have a chat with us today. Uh, Raina, why I was looking so forward to this is because you have a very different background. Of course, obviously, you have the investment knowledge, but you also have a medical background as well, too, which is very unique in this market event. Can you just fill my listeners in on, on the medical side of it and your background in general? Yes, sure. Um, I started off my life in England in medicine, and I did medicine and physics. And I worked uh, over in England at Guy's Hospital. And then when I moved to Canada, I worked at the Royal Victoria Hospital, and I specialized in oncology. And that's when I fell in love with finance. The two areas actually do meld together very, very well. It's all about understanding what has caused the symptoms, all right, and then not getting confused by all the other symptoms and then trying to eliminate all the noise to try to attack that particular cause of it. And then applying the appropriate medication for it and then seeing everybody through it. So the medicine and finance actually do work very well together. Okay, well, great. No, thank you very, very much. And I know you were filling me in that you were just recently, obviously speaking to quite a few doctors and that over the weekend, just to get even more of a handle on this. And the other thing is, I'm going to thank you very much for the Facebook posts. I am literally on that hourly reading your Facebook posts. Uh, it's helped immensely. And I have to go, go on a little bit of a tangent here. It actually got me, you saved my butt with my wife, Tina, the other day, because it was Saturday. And we were running around with the kids and she looks over and just sees the Facebook and she's about ready to give me crap because she's uh, juggling the three kids and she thinks I'm just surfing Facebook posts. And then just as she starts to slam me, I'm like, wait, I'm working. I'm looking, I'm reading Raina's stuff. She's like, oh, okay, well, that's fine then. I was like, whew. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So let's dive in here to some of the questions that are, that a lot of people are asking. Obviously, this is on everyone's mind. Um, it's all over the media. Something I just read the other day was um, from SARS, which was eight months, zero to finish, that there was 56.2 million hits in that eight month range. Whereas back on March 9th, and that's before this really started getting going here in North America, it was already at 1.1 billion on coronavirus. And this is coming from uh, Google News. So the media is at a completely different level on this one, which could be a good or bad thing. But Anyways, let's start getting into some of the questions and let's talk about some people thinking that, well, what if this takes forever to come back and I don't have that much time for my money to come back like a 2008? Is this a long or short term event? Okay, so this event is what is called an exogenous event. That means it comes from outside in as opposed to what is called an internal or a systematic event. Okay, and that means that it's a problem from inside of the system. The best example I can give you of this is this is like 9-11, all right? So you were wandering around with your day, doing a normal things, and then all of a sudden a plane hits this building and the world stops. Well, we've got a kind of a similar event going on here. This is externally based and all of a sudden everybody's caught up into the news. And what happens is with fear is you extrapolate fear. You prolong it. You put a lot of timeline to it. You say it's going to always be bad. What about the age old question for a lot of people where they're like, I, this is too much for me to handle. Should I sell and just get out because it's going to get worse and we don't know how long this is going to take. To say that it's going to be recovered in one month, six months or that period, but a vaccine is being worked on. And because this is a virus, you can actually reanalyze that virus, see which parts are wrong and build in vaccines for it. And that's the process that we're in. The mere fact of the news that they're getting headway on this will cause a big reaction in the markets. It doesn't even have to have a vaccine. 
just the fact that they're working on it and there is progress, that'll begin to shift the whole sentiment of panic away. Right now, we're just caught up in a panic frenzy. And most of it happens because we're caught up in the wrong kind of news. And, and uh, bad news spreads like a virus faster than good news does. So we're kind of like caught up in that. Now you're talking about a timeline of recovery. Okay, so if we go back to 9-11 as that event, you had a severe down and stayed down for about a month to two months. And then after that, it took two months to recover back. If you look at SARS, SARS took eight months for it to come back up to its normal process, back to recovery on this one. If you look at Ebola, that was a similar thing on it. Somewhere by the end of this year, you'll have much better news on the vaccine. This will become a past event, and then people can start moving back up again. All right. So um, that's what I would say is to you know, there is a process here that goes on. Okay. And we just got to let the process go through. Okay, great. Well, thanks for that. Now, curious with the, the very recent um, actions of the feds, what, what do you think about them just dropping the interest rates close to zero? Okay, so the feds are not dropping the interest rate to take out the first problem. The main problem of this whole thing is a medical event. So the only way you can impact a medical event is having a medical solution to it. That's not what the feds are doing. What the feds are doing is making sure that there is enough protection in the banking system so that the banks don't get in trouble to make sure that everybody still has access to their banks and, and all that stuff. So what the Fed is doing is very, very important. All right. They bring stability to the financial system. And that means that people will still be able to do their normal checking. There's no bank run or anything like that. What's needed okay. is the medical initiative. And then now, Raina, with all of the stuff that I've been following with you, what is what is your biggest concern where we, we are at with this today? My biggest concern, right, is that the key focus on this is a, a medical vaccine, okay? And they're working on it. But if they don't bring out the steps that they are taking, people are going to be left in a vacuum of news, and they're just going to conjecture in their heads and make up stories about what is going on. Really what the administration needs to know is say, hey, we've got a drug in trial. We've got three drugs in trial. All right. This is what stage they're at. And maybe one of them isn't working. Maybe the other one is. And also to incentivize the pharma companies to say, hey, we, you know, if you can develop this quick enough, we can give you a tax break for the next year or so. My biggest fear is that there's not enough information given about the crux of this problem, which is medicine. And there's too much information given about the thing that isn't in this one. And that is too much information about panic, too much information about fiscal policy. We really don't need as much fiscal policy now. We can stop. Raina, Patrice here with a question. You just mentioned the fiscal policy. So are you saying that maybe Congress should not look at uh, enacting some of these tax cuts they're talking about? No, nope, they can enact tax cuts. That fiscal policy is tax cuts, but they can steer the fiscal policy towards incentivizing companies to the actual problem. In finance, there's something called Adam Smith's invisible hand. And what that does is that when there's a problem in the world, the world gets together to try and solve that problem. The other thing they got to do right now is get away from politics. Okay, this is the time for all political parties to join together Right, not just Democrats and um, uh, Republicans or anywhere, but just say, okay, our first initiative is to get the company to get the company safe. Right, that should be the first one. My biggest fear is that they're not tackling the problem that created this. And remember, it came very suddenly. To say it was just because of somebody had a bat soup or some funny animal soup, that's not correct because they've been eating these animals for a long time. There is some other events that have happened along with that that created this thing. But it's no use tackling that event. It's better to tackle how do we take care of this now. Don't look for excuses. Start to tackle the actual problem. Financial advance advisors, they need to know this. Financial advisors uh, need to address with their clients the concern or need to explain that there is a process to this. 
It isn't a straight down drop to zero. Also, they've got to explain what are people invested in. As an example, I'll tell you one thing. Most of you who's ever listened to this today has probably gone on Google. When you've gone on Google, you've actually given Google money. So Google's making great revenue out of this. The stock may be down, but the revenue hasn't come down. The other thing that people are doing is they're sitting at home in quarantine and they're watching their Netflixes. Well, as soon as you're watching your Netflixes, you're giving them money. There are a ton of companies that irrespective of what's going on are still doing well. The price may be dropped, but that doesn't mean that the company is going to disappear. Okay, so we've got to have a confidence in that these companies are still very, very strong. Chris mentioned it. Toilet paper companies are doing pretty well as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I got I got an insight on that one with my uh, my friend that, that works at one of those companies. Chris is Rain, more, another Chris, thing. Chris is the sorry, Chris is the drug pusher no. or toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> now, Reina, let's talk about some of the positives, because I know the other day when looking at um, markets, China's is interesting because, of course, this is where it started from. And they're about, I would think, about eight weeks or so, at least ahead of all of us. Can you mm. fill my listeners in on where they're at and some of the positives around okay. that? This morning, I got an update from our people in China and the roads are busy again. They, they are having traffic jams. So they're on to this process on recovery now. And that's what happens with any event. Just take your back yourselves back to 9-11. Don't think of it as a medical crisis. Think of it as a 9-11 happening. There was a sudden drop to it, and then there was a process of recovery. Well, they're ahead of us because they had that drop beforehand. So they're working themselves through it. And you're going to see other countries. Italy is a little bit ahead of us. They're going to have their process and then it. The good advantage of Canada and the U.S. is that our medical systems are much, much stronger. Our hospitals have better equipment. There's two types of equipment that you need. There's a ventilator and then there's something called an ECMO. They have those in the U.S. They have them in it. They didn't have them in Italy. So you couldn't ventilate that lung out quickly. The other thing that this shows you is that the whole thing about keeping your lungs healthy and going out and exercising, well, it's the healthier lungs that will recover from this. And that's going to be a focus on it. The good part of all this is, is that you're seeing China as a perfect example on how to get through this. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you very much for that. Anything else, Raina, that you can add to my listeners before we start to wrap up here? This is the time really for us to really not panic based on the media news. The best thing is if we can just lock ourselves away for about two weeks, because that's the virus's incubation period. All right, consider yourself having a personal holiday for two weeks. Then you will start to realize and be careful and do the normal things. Like we were taught by our parents, wash your hands, you know, do all this stuff. Our parents told us that, and yet we forgot that. You know, utilize everything that is there. Keep on top of it with your advisor. Don't start following the markets because the markets are very, very irrational right now. In 1936, Benjamin uh, Graham termed the markets as Mr. Market. And he goes, Mr. Market is a very bipolar person. He's either really happy or really depressed. Right now, you've got him that's really depressed. But that doesn't mean those your companies are wrong. So ask your advisor, what companies do I hold and how are they doing? And that's the way to work it. This is a process. Honestly, the, 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 the thing that you got to remember, it's a process. Liken it to 9-11. It's more 9-11 than it is SARS, Ebola, 2008, or even 2000. Great. Well, thank you very much. And I'll, I'll touch on that as well, too. To my listeners, it is really important. If you do have an advisor, you have to lean on them on times like this. This is what we're here for. I'm surprisingly not getting as many calls as most people think in regards to the market as I am about clients just concerned about traveling or if their son is not able to work for a while or elderly parents, all travel insurance, if, if that was to end early, all these different issues. This is where you really need to lean on your advisors for a voice of wisdom through this. Many of the advisors that I'm speaking to and having mastermind group sessions with webinars conference calls, we're all working around the clock to constantly educate ourselves 
on this ever-changing market event that is it's literally changing daily. Please lean on your advisors at a time like this because this is why we're here is for times like this. And Raina, I really, really want to thank you very much because like I said at the beginning, I know how busy you are and I really appreciate you taking the time to fill us in here. And I feel better, even better listening to this. So thank you very much. Patrice, do you have anything that you want to add? No, I think uh, Chris Duro, Three Hats Financial, Raina Shohan, uh, Chief Investment Strategist with the Investment Planning Council. Guys, this was a really great discussion. Thank you so much. And again, to the listener, this is a special episode of Chris's new podcast series, The Ride, Life, Work, and Wealth. To subscribe, use the subscribe button on this page and share with friends, family, and colleagues with the share button that is also available. I'm Patrice Sikora, and let's talk again later.